This is the second session on the embryology of the trunk and the limbs. It will cover somite differentiation, segmental innovation and limb bud development. Hello, my name is Richard Fernandez. I'm one of the anatomy lecturers out of Fundura teaching anatomy. When we consider somite development, we should realise that somites are bilaterally paired segments of paraaxial mesoderm and they're positioned along the length of the neural tube or the notochord. So in this diagram here you can see the mesoderm in red and the somites which are located just lateral to that neural tube. Now it's this somite that will develop into the skin, muscles and vertebrae. So let's look at a posterior or a dorsal view of a developing embryo. Here we can actually see the neural tube and just adjacent to it we can see these somites. If we go back to a cross-section of the developing embryo at a later stage, we can see how the epidermis has already been formed, some limb buds are starting to develop and bud out, but I want to draw your attention over here to the developing somite. This somite will develop into three functional aspects that eventually lead to the development of skin, it's referred to as the dermatome, it'll lead to the development of muscle, so this part's known as the myotome, and it'll lead to the development of the vertebrae, so this aspect here is the sclerotome. When we consider how the paraaxial mesoderm develops into somites, we should realize that a lot of them develop at the start. Approximately 42 to 44 pairs of somites develop, and they run along the entire length of this developing embryo, just lateral to the notochord. However, a lot of these somites disappear and we end up with around 35 to 37. Now it's important to remember that the somites will develop along a craniocaudal axis. So here we can see from the head all the way down to the tail. Now somites from this craniocaudal development pattern end up being subdivided into regions. There are four occipital somites, 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral and 3 coccygeal. And here we can see on this lateral view of a developing embryo those somites. So the occipital would be around here, cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacrococcygeal somites. You may be wondering that why there are 8 cervical somites but only 7 cervical vertebrae. Well, as they split and divide one of them goes off to join the occipital somites. When we consider somite differentiation, it's very important to understand that there are three functional aspects that result from somite development. There's the sclerotome, dermatome and myotome. So let's consider the differentiation steps. Here we can see that a somite will differentiate into a sclerotome and dermomyotome. Sclerotome referring to the bones of the axial skeleton, the vertebrae. If we consider differentiation of the dermomyotome, we can see it results in the dermatome that makes up skin and myotome that makes up muscle. If we now consider the myotome, we need to appreciate that the myotome will develop into the epimere, which is the dorsal muscle mass. And the dorsal muscle mass is considered to be the deep muscles of the back, i.e. the erector spinae muscles. On the other hand, the hypermere is considered to be the ventral muscle mass, and the ventral muscle mass are all the muscles of the anterolateral trunk and the limbs. So anterolateral trunk, some examples would include the pectoralis major, the intercostal muscles, the anterolateral abdominal wall muscles, and of course the muscles that make up the limb. Now here we have a cross-section of a developing embryo so we can see the somite development. We can see here this would be the dorsal aspect because there's the developing vertebra. We can see the sclerotome is forming the vertebral arch and the vertebral bodies. If we draw our attention to the dermatome and myotome, we can see that the dermatome will eventually develop into the skin and the myotome, of course, those muscle masses. Now, it's important to consider that that myotome is going to develop into two muscle masses epimere at the back and when we think about the epimere we should recall that it's supplied by dorsal rami or the dorsal ramus of a spinal nerve. The other muscle mass is the hypomere which is the anterolateral mass including 
these limb buds. And of course we should remember that the hypermere is supplied by the ventral mass. Easy way to recall the hypermere and the epimere is to think about hugs. There's the H in there. When you hug someone, there's contact between your anterolateral trunk and your limbs. Well, maybe just the upper limb, but it depends on how intensely you're going to hug someone, whether you're going to use upper limb and lower limb. When we consider innovation of somites, we need to realize that axons sprout out on a segmental basis. This means that each spinal nerve that emerges at the same level of each somite should supply that corresponding spinal segment of muscle and skin. Let's consider segmental innovation of somites by spinal nerves. Firstly, we should appreciate that the dermatome is one segment of skin and the myotome is one segment of muscle. Recall that the myotome is broken into the epimere or the dorsal segment, dorsal muscle mass. That dorsal muscle mass will be supplied by the dorsal ramus and the ventral muscle mass or the hypermere will be supplied by the ventral ramus. Now this is a key point you need to understand before you progress further. On this diagram on the left, you can see the notochord, which develops eventually into the neural tube and of course spinal cord, and developing around it we have the sclerotome, which of course is going to form the vertebral bodies and the rest of the vertebra. One should think of the dermomyotome as a marshmallow. Think of puffing up the marshmallow and watching it expand. Now as that marshmallow expands, the axons that sprout out should get dragged with it. So here you'll notice the axons sprouting out, the myotome developing and the dermatome developing and you can see that that axon has supplied that segment. Now this is repeated, so here's another sprouting axon supplying another segment and so on and so on. Now we can review principle N10 which indicates that nerve fibers derived from a single spinal segment innovate a particular area of skin, the dermatome, and a particular block of muscle, the myotome. So here we can see that happening in a fully formed vertebra and muscle and skin group. Here you can see the spinal cord and the spinal nerve. And you'll notice that this spinal nerve is not only innovating the group of muscle, the myotome, but also the overlying skin, that is, the dermatome. When we consider limb bud development, we should also realize it occurs in a similar segmental way. First of all, we need to appreciate that the lateral plate mesoderm and the myotome migrate into a limb field to produce a limb bud. After that, the lateral plate mesoderm starts to develop into bones and joints of the limb, whereas the myotomal cells develop into the skeletal muscle and the epidermal cap is stretched over the myotome. So here we can see that happening we can see that the myotomal cells will be developing into this limb bud and here is the epidermal cap that has been stretched over the myotome. Recall that skin needs to overlie the muscle. The next stage is the development of neurovasculature. Arteries and veins get dragged out with this developing limb bud as you can see here. These neurovascular structures migrate with the dermatome and myotome supplying it as they develop. As I mentioned earlier, the dermatome, which becomes the skin, is also segmented based on spinal levels. So these dermatomes tend to migrate along the limb bud, along a preaxial border, and come back to the body via a postaxial border. So here we can see that. Here we can see the segmental levels of the dermatomes, and here we can see L2, L3, L4, so they migrate to the periphery along that preaxial border and then they come back along a postaxial border. If we consider the fully developed adult and dermatomes, here we can see the topographic arrangement. You can see that as we move down the spinal cord from C4, C5, C6 and so forth, each spinal segment that would supply skin, i.e. a dermatome, is migrating along the limb. Notice that they're migrating along this vein, the cephalic vein, which represents the preaxial border. And notice also that the subsequent dermatomes migrate back to the trunk along 
postaxial border, which is indicated by the basilic vein. We have a similar arrangement in the lower limb. You'll notice as we move down the spinal cord from L1, L2, L3 and so forth, the dermatomes migrate distally along the lower limb, so L1, L2, L3. Notice also they are migrating distally along this preaxial border, the great saphenous vein, and returning back via the postaxial border. So here we can review the development of somites and their segmental innovation. So on this diagram here, looking at a dorsal view of the developing embryo, we can see those little somites. So here we can see several somites being stacked over to form the trunk and extending into the limbs as well. Just to remind you, the sclerotome forms the bone, myotome muscle and dermatome skin. These all form one segment from one somite and you'll also appreciate that the axons from the spinal cord sprout out and supply that region. So when we look at the adult human and the dermatome patterns we notice that one spinal segment is supplying not only the muscle, the myotome, but the skin or the dermatome. So for example here is T3 spinal segment supplying the muscle and skin over there. Now it's time to review your knowledge and apply it in these activities. For activity two, start by labeling the components and explain the two groups of muscle masses that develop from the myotome. Also indicate the innervation of those muscle masses. For the third activity, start by indicating the three functional parts that develop from the somite. And on the left side, draw the two most superficial of those functional parts and then draw axonal sprouting based on segmental innovation. Post your results on LMS for any further discussion. This concludes the second session on the embryology of the limbs and the trunk.